Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here with part three of uh, using our MIDI keys to trigger our patterns, uh, this time with the Thor step sequencer. Last time around we were able to trigger our patterns using um, using a key and when we press down on the key it would start the pattern and when we lifted our finger off the key it would stop the pattern. This time around what we're going to do is we're going to have it so that the key acts as a toggle. So when you press it down it's going to start the pattern and when you even if you lift up your finger it's still going to the pattern is still going to keep running until you press the key yet again. So um, this is going to be a much more helpful method when you're playing live because you might not have enough fingers to press all the keys you want to press on your keyboard. This way you can have the patterns latched and they stay continuously running until you press the key again. So all that being said, the way you do that, um, continuing off where we, where we left off in our last um, tutorial, in our last video, what you're going to do is you're going to turn this off on Thor. You're going to go down, you're going to turn this off. You're not going to need that. You're actually going to create a new Thor. And we'll put that Thor up above the other one. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to delete these two. Okay, so now we've got our whole self contained unit here. I'm going to go in, I'm going to initialize this patch again. I'm going to go down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the step sequencer on this Thor. And this is what's going to be the latch. So I'll just call it latch or hold, whatever, whatever term you prefer. And this Thor down here is already going to contain our pattern. So we'll just call it pattern. This will clarify things a little bit. Uh, so on the latch, what we're going to do is we're going to leave it on step. We're going to leave it on forward. We're going to turn down to a full octave. We're going to go down to our curve. We're going to create a two step curve. First step is going to be zero. Second step is going to be 100. We're going to go into the modulation bus routing section and we're going to take our um, MIDI key gate. The amount is going to be 100 and the destination is going to be the step sequencer's trigger. This is going to trigger the two step pattern. Okay. And let's just initialize this. Okay. All right, there we go. So it's going to start on pattern one at zero, and then it's going to go to the second curve here, and which is going to be at 100. Now, if you turn it around, what we're going to do is we're going to take this curve, the curve one output, and we're going to send that down to trigger the other Thor's step sequencer, which is our pattern. And that's going to trigger this to start running from the beginning. Okay, because it's on repeat, it's on forward, and it's going to stay on until we turn it off again. And this just basically turns it on and off. The other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into our programmer in the combinator. On the pattern Thor, we're going to have to turn off the received notes. The subtractor already has the notes that it's not being received. The only one receiving notes is going to be the latch. And the latch is going to receive the notes on the only key, only one key out of the whole sequence, C minus two. So now when you play that key, it's going to start the trigger, it's going to move forward, so it's going to turn it on, and then that's going to play our pattern through from the beginning. So it's going to sound like this. Now when we press the key again, it turns it off, and everything is instantaneous. Okay, and that is how you set up your um, latch for your uh, for your key triggering for the patterns. Um, once again, once you have this type of setup, you can duplicate it, and I will do that right now. I'll just go in, select all three of these, duplicate the devices. The only thing you're really going to have to change at this point, I mean, aside from your your sound source, so let's just change that now. Let's do this, let's do that, let's bring that down a little bit. Uh, let's also change the pattern so we have a different pattern running. So we'll randomize the pattern. Uh, okay, come on. Hello. There we go. Okay, so we'll randomize the pattern on that. 
And then lastly, what we need to do for the second latch, the second pattern actually has to turn off the received notes. And the latch copy will just turn it up to one more key. So that'll be C sharp minus two. And the first one is C minus two. So when we play it out, first one goes, turn on the second one. Of course, it's not going to work if I don't have the audio routed. So you're going to take the audio output and send it to another channel. And there you go. So when you press first one, it's playing. Second one's playing. Turn off the first one. Turn off the second one. And you can create as many of these devices as you want to cover your entire keyboard if you'd like. Um, it all depends on how much CPU power you have. So there you have it. That's how you um, make your, uh, your key triggering a little bit more powerful and a little bit easier to control. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I'm Rob. Come visit me at reason101.net where you can find some of these files and I will make them available to you uh, in the coming days. Thanks for watching.